Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. Today I'm answering a super popular question that I get asked here at my channel. How can I take my Matplotlib or Seaborn figure and add a secondary axis? So let's get to it in the Python code. We'll start off coding by importing the PyPlot module as PLT, and I'm also going to import NumPy to create some data and also Seaborn to work with Seaborn figures later. Once I've done that, I'm going to create some data. Here I'm creating X, which ranges from 0 to 100. I'm also creating two other arrays, one called XSQRT, which is the square root of X, and one called x squared, which is x squared. So let's say I want to create a plot of x against itself. So here I just have a straight line that ranges from 0 to 100 on both axes. So let's say I want to compare this linear representation for x against a square root representation. By that I mean, let's say I want to now plot another line here where I'm going to use x on my x-axis, but I'm going to use x square root on my y-axis. So what I'm seeing here is that the blue line, which represents my linear representation of x, is going to be much, much larger than the square root of x when we get up to values like 100. So what's happening here is that it's really difficult for me to even compare these two lines because they're on two different scales. This is exactly the situation that you might be facing when you're considering adding a secondary axis. You want to plot two lines, but one of them's on a totally different scale than the other. So let's go ahead and remake that previous figure, but we're going to do it with the secondary axes for the square root representation. The syntax for this plot is going to be a little bit different. First, we need to start by setting up the subplots of our figure. So by default, we're just going to get one figure with one set of axes here. We're going to go ahead and save both the figure and the axes as Python variables. So at this point, ax1 represents the axes of this figure. And you can actually use ax1 to plot data. Here, let's go ahead and plot x against itself. That's just going to give us the straight line that we saw before. So, so far, we just have a basic plot with a linear representation for x. How can we add a secondary axis to this figure? Well, for that, we're going to use something called twin x. I'm going to take my current axes and use twin x on them. I'm also going to save the output of that as a new variable, let's say ax2. As you can see here, what that's done is created a new y-axis for us on the right-hand side. This twin x command will actually create a new set of axes based on the previous axes. However, for that new set, we're going to have an invisible x-axis and the y-axis is going to be independent and appear on the opposite side of our original y-axis. So twin x is giving us that secondary axis that we were looking for. The scale of x is going to be inherited from ax1, but the scale of y is going to be independent and created specifically for ax2. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some data onto ax2. We'll go down here, ax2.plot, and for this case, let's go ahead and put the square root on this secondary axis. Okay, so here's what's happened. We have the original axis over here on the left, ranging from 0 to 100. That still applies to our linear representation of x. But over here on the right-hand side, we are ranging from 0 to 10. And that's because what we're plotting here is actually the square root of x. So let's make sure everything's clear before we finish off with the basics here. Let's go ahead and add another color for this line so that we can be sure that we know what we're looking at. I'll make this one orange. And we should also label these axes. So I'll do x1.setYLabel, and I'm going to call this one linear since it's the linear representation. I'm also going to label ax2, we'll do setYLabel, and put that one as square root. Great, so that's exactly what we were looking for. We now have a secondary axis that's on a scale of its own, and we've labeled those axes so we know which one goes with which line. Now that we know the basics of TwinX, I wanna share with you a few extra tips to make your visuals even more impactful. Specifically, how can we color code those axes, and how can we replicate this process for a Seaborn figure? 
Let's take a look. For starters, here's where we left off with the previous figure. We had the linear scale over here on the left and the square root scale over here on the right y-axis. And we also went ahead and labeled both of those to make this plot a little bit more clear. But my first tip is to use the same colors for those lines as we do for the text and maybe even the spine color on those axes. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll go back up here to our figure and I'm going to just create a new variable called let's say color one. And I'm going to represent this by the string blue. I really just want to make everything about that left axis blue and I'm going to be referring to that many times, so I'll just set that to be color one. I'll go down to my plot, and this color should now be equal to color one. And I'm also going to set the text color of that Y label also equal to color one. So we're gonna color code everything. On my second plot, I'm going to set a new color, let's say color two equals maybe crimson. There are lots of different colors you can choose from. So we'll update our color of our line to be color two, and we'll also set the text color to be color two. Okay, let's see what happens. Great, so what we can see here, this is a lot more clear that we have the blue line matching up with the blue text, and the red line is now matching up with the red text. And we can make this even more clear by updating the text color for all of our tick labels, as well as even the spines themselves. If I wanna update my tick labels, I can go back up here to my X1, and I'm going to reference the tick params. Then I'll pass in that I want to specifically refer to the Y axis here, and then I'm going to put in that the label color should be color one. Great, so now all of the left Y axis tick labels are going to be blue. And we're really just going to do the same thing here. So I'll just copy and paste it down below, but we're gonna switch this to X2 and color two. Awesome. Finally, if you want to color those spines as well, that is the line that represents the Y axis, you can go back up here. You're just going to be setting the color of X2. So one thing to keep in mind, um, X1 and X2 are actually plotted on top of each other. So X1 is plotted then X2 is plotted on top. So we really want to refer to X2 when we're talking about both of those colors since it's on top of X1. Okay, so we'll reference the spines of X2. We will reference the leftmost spine and we're going to then set the color and we'll set that to be color one. So now we've updated the spine itself to be blue. And again, we're just gonna do the same thing, but we're going to then reference the rightmost spine and we'll switch that to color two. Awesome. So we've color coded everything so that somebody can look at this figure and very easily understand that the leftmost axis refers to the blue line and the rightmost axis refers to the red line. It's all about making this clear for your audience and I think color coding those axes really does help a lot. An alternative way to make this figure more clear is to add a legend to it. So adding a legend when you do have two separate axes like this will just require a little bit more work than usual. So the first thing that we need to do if we want to add a legend to this figure is I'm going to need some labels for these lines. So let's call this line the linear line. And we're also going to add a label for our second plot. Let's call this one uh, SQRT, so we know it's the square root. So once I've had those labels, now I can reference those lines when I make a legend. So there's a couple ways to make a legend here. The first way is to make a legend for each of these axes independently. So we'll go up to X1, and now we'll just say that we want a legend. We're also going to do the same thing down here, but for X2. We will also say that we would like a legend. So let's see what happens. So maybe this has happened to you. Both of those legends did appear, but they're one on top of each other. So what we really need to do is specify a location for one of those axes. Let's put this one over to the right. And you can put this wherever it makes sense on your figure. But now we know that the blue line is the linear line and the orange line is the square root. Now, maybe you don't like this representation because we have two separate legends. So how can we make a legend that has both of those lines and we just have one legend? The way that we can do that is to go back up to our plots and I'm actually gonna save the output here. I'll save this as line one 
And I'm going to do the same thing down here. Line two equals my second plot. So now I'm going to delete out those legends that I currently have. And I'm just going to create one final legend at the bottom. But I need to put both of those lines in my final legend. So let's create another variable called lines. And I'm just going to literally add these two lines together line one and line two. Those are lists of all of the lines that came with each plot. So if I'm adding two lists together, now I just have one longer list. Then I also need to get the labels of these lines. So I'm going to use a list comprehension to do this. I'll just say L dot get label for L in lines, right? So lines represents both line one and two, and I'm just grabbing the labels for each of those lines. So once I've got the list of the labels as well, I can then go on to put a legend on either of the axes I'd like, but now I'm going to specifically refer to the lines and the labels that I just created. And there we go. We have one legend here and we have added both of those lines to the same legend. Finally, if you're using Seaborn instead of matplotlib to do your plotting, Seaborn also allows you to use TwinX. So let's say that you've created a line plot like this one and you've used Seaborn to create that line plot. Well, if we want to add a secondary axis to this plot, what we would do is save the axes from this line plot. So Seaborn will actually return those axes to you and you can grab them as a Python variable. So just checking the type of X1, we do have those subplot axes like before. So again, I can use TwinX here. I'm just going to create X2, which is X1.TwinX. This is just going to be a copy of those axes, except for the Y axis now will be independent and on the other side. So I can then use X2 if I want to use Seaborn to make, let's say, another line plot. So let's say now we're plotting our um, square root. The main thing that I'll have to do differently here is specify that this line plot should be put on the second axis. So I'm just going to pass X2 into this X argument of the line plot. Now we see that we do have a new scale for our X2, even though we're working with a Seaborn plot. And one final pro tip for you, if you are working with something like dark grid and you notice that this new grid is overlapping the blue line, you can actually just go back up here and turn off the grid of that second axis. You can set that equal to false. And now you'll see that the blue line does not have that grid over top of it. So, so far we've been using twin X so that we can have two Y axes on our figures. It's also possible to have three separate Y axes for your figures if you happen to have three different scales for your data. And instead of creating duplicate Y axes, you can also create duplicate X axes using a method called twin Y. Now, I won't go through the process of creating those figures in this video, but if you wanna see that code along with all of the code I showed you today, you can check them out on my GitHub page and I'll put a link to that in the description bar below. So thanks so much for joining me today. And also a huge thank you to the viewers who asked me this question. I read every single one of your comments so please keep those questions coming. See you next time. There's also another function. So I. Thanks so much. For... Thanks so much for. That's.